Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm the Intel, and today we're going to be ranking every single Borderlands title, all the way from Borderlands 1, all the way to the newly released Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And yes, I will be including Tales from the Borderlands, which is a really cool spin-off episodic adventure if you don't know. Well, let's jump right in. Alright, we're back to where the series started, and I really get nostalgic every time I see that intro. Right, sure, evening will be nice and you can go with... Borderlands 1 hasn't aged well graphically, to say the least, and it's easily the least colourful and the most grey and monotone of the series. Story-wise, Borderlands 1 isn't exactly a great story. There's some good moments with some good characters, but on an overall note, the main villain, Commandante Steel, is, well, barely in the game, and Dahl are a pretty bad evil corporation when compared to the other bad corporations in the series. Gameplay-wise, Borderlands 1 hasn't aged particularly well either. As comparing it to any other entry in the series, it's not exactly the most fun and engaging gameplay, with the action skills being pretty boring from punching, a turret, ghost walking, and a bird. Overall, I gotta give credit to Borderlands 1 for beginning the series, but overall it's a fine entry and it's just not aged well. If it aged a little better then maybe we'll be talking differently about it, but overall I think Borderlands 1 belongs in the C tier. Borderlands 2 is the most well-known and the highest reviewed of the series, but does it still hold its own against the newer entries? Of course it does. Borderlands 2 entered a new peak of the series, with some incredible gameplay, a fantastic story and a ton of DLCs, some great stories and additions to the base game as well. Gameplay-wise, Borderlands 2 really is still a ton of fun to play nowadays. It's honestly still as addicting as it was in 2012, but you can start to feel its age as it's starting to get a little old compared to the more modern entries. Also, a fun fact is this year, in 2022 September, Borderlands 2 will turn 10 years old, which kind of makes me feel pretty old to be honest. Story-wise, I honestly think most Borderlands fans are in agreement that Borderlands 2 knocked it out of the park, especially with fantastic characters like Handsome Jack, which is easily one of the greatest video game villains. Again, major credit to Damien Clark for his fantastic work as Handsome Jack. Also, I have to mention the amount of DLC in Borderlands 2, as some of it is really as high quality as the main game, especially Tiny Tina's attack on Dragon Keep, which is particularly amazing, and that DLC would actually lead to something much bigger for Tiny Tina, but we'll come back to that nearer the end of this video. Borderlands 2 also would receive constant support, updates, and DLC for two years until 2014 when the final DLC dropped, but five years later in 2019 the actual final DLC, Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary, would release, which is in my opinion a fantastic addition to the game. But this does bring us to our one and only negative for this game, and in my opinion I was not a fan at all of Ultimate Vault Hunt Mode, or UVHM, which raised enemy and boss health to such an extreme level that you were forced to use the slag element to weaken them to actually fight the enemies. I really did not like UVHM, and I'm glad it never returned for any other future entries. But, with only one negative that I would consider for Borderlands 2, this game is easily a 10 out of 10 game, meaning yes, this is an S tier entry to the series. Twenty fourteen was a particularly big year for the franchise, as two new entries would release for the series. First of these was Borderlands the Pre sequel, which would instead of Gearbox be developing the title, it would actually be developed by 2K Australia. This is the first time an entry in the series had been developed by anyone other than Gearbox, as Gearbox were busy with their work on Battleborn. If you don't know what Battleborn is, it's probably best to keep it that way. The pre-sequel is very, very similar to Borderlands 2. It plays almost identically to Borderlands 2, but with some small key differences gameplay-wise, such as the addition of the cryo element, and a honestly better balanced skill tree and a better endgame balancing. But it wouldn't help the lack of things to do after you beat the game. Story-wise, pre-sequel is, well, not great in my opinion. I think it's alright, but honestly I can barely remember anything from the story as it just didn't hit the highs of Borderlands 2, and I honestly think Borderlands 1 did a better story as well, to be honest. It just didn't really do anything special or anything worth playing story-wise. Overall, pre-sequel wasn't bad, it's not the worst story of the series, as we will come to that very soon. 
but gameplay wise it was a minor addition and improvement over Borderlands 2. I just don't think this game's really worth playing. To be honest, I've played through it twice and I've tried to play it again, but I just can't. There's something about it that makes me want to go play Borderlands 2 instead, so honestly this game belongs in the C tier, beside Borderlands 1. In 2014, a second Borderlands title released, and this was The Tales from the Borderlands. I think the most underrated of the series in my opinion. Story-wise, it's the second best by miles. Across its five episodes, we meet new characters, Reese and Fiona, and their very different lifestyles and how they interact with the Borderlands series in a way we've never seen before. We actually get to see the actual people living on Pandora and what life is actually like on these planets. But we also get to see some returning characters like Zero and Handsome Jack, which are welcome and crucial to the story of this title. You can probably tell I like this one a lot, but gameplay wise I can't rule out that since it's a telltale game, the gameplay is pretty basic and can be pretty off-putting if you're expecting another Borderlands game or an action game. But gameplay wise it's actually a step up from the other telltale games. But compared to Borderlands it's a big downgrade. Overall Tales is a great entry with some great story, but again, gameplay wise, it's pretty off putting and not very great. If you don't want to just sit there and enjoy a story, if you don't want to do that, then this game wasn't really fun for you to play through. So I have to put this game in the B tier for that. The Borderlands series wouldn't see a new entry all the way until 2019, with the release of the direct sequel to Borderlands 2 with Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 is easily the greatest entry in the series, gameplay-wise. New additions like sliding, mantling, and just a faster and more modern gameplay help elevate the gameplay of Borderlands 3 to be miles ahead of any entry before it. But that brings us to the other side of Borderlands 3, the most major, negative of them all, which is the story. Borderlands 3 easily has the worst story in the series, with unnecessary characters, unnecessary deaths, and some laughably bad villains. Borderlands 3's story was a disaster, and really was a major disappointment coming off of the writing of Borderlands 2. But there was still hope for this game story-wise. Gearbox would release 4 story DLCs, and I think this is easily the saving grace of this game, with some great writing and set pieces, DLCs like Bounty of Blood, helped make Borderlands 3 a much stronger title. Honestly, Bounty of Blood is one of my favourite DLCs from the series. I highly recommend giving the Borderlands 3 story DLCs a try. All four of them I think are really good and really worth playing. Overall then, Borderlands 3 with the best gameplay in the series but the worst base game story means it just, and I mean just, makes it to the B tier. We finally made it to the end. The most recently released entry in the series comes with the release of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Releasing at the end of March 2022, the most recent spin-off for the series follows the almost exact same gameplay as Borderlands 3, but with some pretty major changes that could change the series forever. Firstly, Wonderlands adds full character creation, meaning no more choosing from a predefined character. Like, you can't choose to be like a Lilith, a Maya, or an Axton, you have to make your own character. You might see that as a positive or a negative, Personally, I really like it, but I don't really want to see it in Borderlands 4. I think it's good for spin-offs, but not good for the main series. Secondly, Wonderlands removes grenades in favour of spells, which I think is another fantastic change, and really enjoy some really fun and unique spells that I think are much better than grenades. The third and final major change is the removal of the open-world-esque areas, and vehicles are also gone as well. Wonderlands, you now have an overworld, which is purely walking and with really no combat but it is the quote-unquote open world of the game, with smaller linear areas still existing, but overall this was a change I wasn't that big on. I kind of did like the driving around open world elements, but that's just my opinion. Finally, this brings us to the story of Wonderlands. Is it any good? Yeah. Wonderlands is a major step up on the story department compared to Borderlands 3. I really enjoyed the story in this title. It's full of great writing, jokes that are actually pretty funny, and some great characters. It's some of the strongest writing since Borderlands 2 in my opinion. My first issue with this game though is the end game. The end game for this title is pretty poor so far. I've beat the game and I feel no real reason to grind for any new legendaries or do the Chaos Chamber activity, as in my opinion it's pretty boring and repetitive so far, but I hope DLC and updates will improve that. And my other main issue is the loot luck aspect. You have to find hundreds of loot 
dice, which you have to find oh, like hundreds of these just so you have a decent chance of getting a legendary. That's my major issue, is in my opinion, this overall hurt the game and makes me less want to go back to play it. Overall though, Wonderlands is an A-tier Borderlands game. If my negatives for this game get fixed or altered in some way, I might just see this game climbing its way into the S tier. And that is the list. Feel free to leave your own list down in the comments below. I like to see what other people think and if I was alone in my opinions or if people share my same opinion about the range of the game. Anyway though, thank you for watching and I've been the Intel.